Oh, interesting little project here. Oh, we've got a Kenwood TS940S uh, for the power him off. Um, it gives the impression it's working fine. Um, and then intermittently we just lose the whole of the, the display. There we go, it's just an adjust. Um, I lost everything. I just seems to have lost a bit. Uh, if I adjust the VFO, rotates it very slightly. It comes back. Spears, if I use the USB, it comes back. Uh, any other buttons now bringing it back? Oops, sorry about that. Uh, a little bit high, I think. Let's turn it down a bit. Um, uh, quick Google around, and it seems that it's possibly um, a PLO unit. Um, but um, also, there's also the probability of an EEPROM, which is under this cover here. Um, may need um, if it's if it's the earlier version. Uh, may need removing from its uh, jolly line socket, clean the contacts, put it back. That can also, and also there's a battery on there, and about two batteries or a single battery on there, depending on the model. Um, what we'll do, we'll have a quick look. Um, and we, what we'll do, remove this. We'll get down to the piece underneath, um, the processor board, or CPU board, whatever they call it. Um, have a quick look at that. You know, if that's okay, then we'll move down to the uh, PLL board and we'll check that for dry joints. And okay, so remove the uh, speaker on the top cover. Uh, remove this board, um, and we're going to check the uh, the backup battery. Um, it looks okay. This is the new generation board where the EEPROM's actually soldered in. Uh, there's no cleaning up of that one. Um, still going to take the board out there and check it. Um, it's not going to work now. I'm digging this deep, so I will just proceed through and we'll get down to the PLL unit. Um, and hopefully that's where our fault is. But um, I was sort of hoping. I've seen a couple of videos where they've just taken the EEPROM out, give it a clean, um, and it's cured the problem. But it doesn't look like that's going to be the case with this one. So let's carry on digging. Right, got this job board out. Oh, there's all for all this. It's all over the place. Just so I can remember how to put it all back together. <laughs> uh, there's not a lot to it, really. Uh, let's have a quick look. Uh, as I say, the EEPROM soldered in on this one. Um, there ain't nothing else in the zip I could pull out. Soldering don't look particularly brilliant on the back. Um, I'm not going to be able to zoom in, probably, but. Oh, it looks like, it's almost like as if they had one size drill and drilled every hole the same size basically um, and then just poked the uh, the components in and hope they'd sold it as it probably went through the flow machine. Um, the pad sizes are about right but the hole sizes all look a little bit too large and some that look a little bit suspect. I might wipe over a couple of these joints. There is a couple of caps on here. I'm going to check check those and change those, especially this tent. They're well renowned for uh, going those are. So, um, and this being as old as it is, it's probably definitely worth having a look. And there's not many caps on there, so in fact, there's only three really. So I might as well look at changing those. Um, you know, four, I suppose, with that one, over, the larger one over there. Uh, and I'll wipe over a few of the joints. Not much else I can do on this one really. I've checked the voltage. This is this is new battery. It's only just been fitted, so um, that's showing um, 3.4 volts, something like 3.2 from something like that on them lines anyway. But but it's fine anyway. It's new. It's only just been fitted. Uh, so uh, for a job, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dive in and go down to the PLO unit, which is underneath this plate. It's only held in with. Oh, actually, it's already loose. Was it loose? I don't know. Maybe somebody's been here before me. But that's a bit weird. I don't know. Maybe I took the screws in a bit and didn't realise. But I'm going to do the same with this now. I'm going to drop this PLL unit out um, and check the 
check it for dry joints, check some of the components, and then we'll uh, we'll then move to getting the voltmeter out and then start checking some supply rails and stuff and things. But I'd rather do a visual initial visual inspection um, just to see if I can see if there's anything actually uh, obviously jumping out. Um, I've been told these connectors aren't brilliant, so these you know you need to check these for any verdigris or anything or um, check these connections as well, make sure they're all down. Um, all of this, this being the parallel board, can cause all the symptoms that we had on the front. So that would be the next thing to do. And also the main power supply as well. I might look at changing some of the caps out on that. Only due to its age, really. Nothing for no other reason at this moment other than that. But PLL board removed. Or at least floating new one. Uh, I'm soldering on brilliant on all of it, but nothing's jumping out. As I was working my way down, so it looks like something's been here before me anyway. So, um, but what we're going to do is we're going to get the microscope out anyway and have a look at the uh, parallel board soldering, um, and see if we can uh, find anything that's amiss. That one there is looking a little bit suspect as well. Um, we'll just give them all a good wipe over on the um, this memory board. Oh, uh, microprocessor board. Uh, I'll just show you. I don't want to short it out. But the uh, all of these joints are dry, and this tin just lifts off, uh, which is a, a good sign. Uh, so if they're doing that, then potentially others can have done it as well. So, um, so I think it's going to be. Initially, we're going to sort of give everything a wipe over uh, with the soldering iron, um, some fresh solder, put it back together, see what it does. Um, and if that don't work, then we'll uh, we'll start digging a little bit deeper. Um, hopefully, it's just a simple dry joint on it. Okay, I've wiped over all the joints on the processor board. Um, I've changed three caps. There's a 10 microfarad, 50 volt, 220 microfarad, 16 volt. And I think that one's a 470 microfarad. Yep, 470 microfarad. Uh, 16 volt again. Um, that's your uh, 220. There's your 10 microfarad. And there's the 470. So I've changed those. I've te checked the 10 microfarad tant on, a, on the uh, on the meter, um, the LCR meter. And I've checked these on the LCR meter, and they all read okay. Slightly out of tolerance, but other than that, okay. Uh, but I thought I'd change them anyway, it was only three, so that's done. Um, what I'm going to do is put this all back together now, give it a quick try, um, and see if anything's um, improved. If not, I think this board's fine now, so I can move on there to just the PLL board and start checking some voltages on it. Well, it's sort of near enough all back together now. Um, I need to top to put back on. Um, seems to be working. I'm going to reset using the A minus B and pressing the power button and pressing the little button on the back of there. Uh, but it, it, after resoldering all the joints, um, it seems to have sort of cured the problem in a way. So I'm just sticking back on. Just going to find something, make a noise. Uh, I think that's Ritty or Data. Ritty? Data FT8, yeah. Um, but I should show it's working. The S, the S meter's working okay as well. Um, I've just got a long, long wire plugged into um, as a comparison to the FT77 uh, signals there anyway. So that's 4 that's 5. Um, so it seems to be working fine. Um, yeah, it seems to be working okay. Um, I tune it to somebody speaking. On. <laughs> it doesn't seem to be anybody on at all today, uh, as usual. Um, but yeah, so uh, wiping over all the solder joints, replacing a couple of caps um, on both the microprocessor board that's got the battery on and the board underneath, which I believe is the PLR board. Um, it seems to have cured the fault. Uh, we'll soap test it um, and just see how it runs for a bit. But other than that, uh, 
hopefully now I can pass it back and um, it should give a few more years service.